I'm not gonna lie, this, this took longer than I thought it would. Over the holiday season, while my parents were here, my dad gave me this. This is a Hedden Tiny Tad, and if you're a fisherman, you probably recognize this little lure, but if not, let me fill you in on a little bit of the lore. Back in the day, like 1950s back in the day, Hedden's 1952 catalog introduced the world to a new lure that they called the Tad Poly Spook. Now the Tad Poly Spook was pretty fancy for the day. It was 3 eighths of an ounce, about three inches long. But what made it stand out from other lures on the market was it didn't need any metal veins or blades to impart action to it. The line was tied right to the face, which provided the needed surface area to let the lure dive. In addition, the slim neck and the thick boy body gave it a nice vibrating or a fast vibrating rolling lateral motion or action that would progressively increase the faster it was reeled in. Now the Tad Poly was loved and it stayed in production for about 50 years. Well, one year after that little catalog came out in 1953, the Tiny Tad came out, which was a smaller version measuring at one and seven eighths inch and about three sixteenths of an ounce. Now these little guys were aimed at the spinning rod and reel market that was just starting to come alive and by the time 1972 came around, the body had changed slightly. It was about two and an eighth inch long now and around a quarter, a quarter of an ounce. And you probably get where this is going. Although Hedden is still around and they're still making lures today, the Tiny Tad is not one of them and my dad is not a fan of that. So when he was here, he gave me this one and he's like, hey, do you think you could 3D print that? And without giving it much thought, I was like, easy. So that's what I set out to do. And in my head, this was like a 10 minute job. And to be fair, knowing what I know now, it probably is a 10 minute job. But this first go, it wasn't 10 minutes. Also, if you're not like a big angler, don't worry. What we're gonna talk about today, you can use to like literally 3D print anything out in the world. Now, my first thought when I was thinking about how I was going to 3D print this little lure was 3D scanning. I have a 3D scanner made by Creality. I have the CR Scan01, which I've used in the past with mixed success. And I thought that would be like the perfect tool for the job. So I took the tiny tad, I set it up on the rotary table, and I let the scanner do its thing. Bruh. That, that's not helpful. Now, if you know anything about machine vision or 3D scanning, you know that robots hate looking at shiny shit. Now, the tiny tad isn't a mirror, but it does have a bit of a gloss to it, and I thought that that was the thing that was throwing the scanner for a loop. So I needed to find a way to kind of tone it down a bit. And I don't want to just, like, paint this thing matte white or black or something like that i don't my dad wouldn't be a huge fan of that and they don't make these anymore so whatever we got to do to this thing to keep it from being so shiny it's got to be reversible and the first thing that came to mind was golf and you probably know where this is going too if you're a golfer and you like practice ball striking <laughs> dr shoals odor x the funny thing is i'm not sure how good this stuff actually works on your feet but when it comes to like a removable matte white spray paint this Odor X stuff is like the best, the best out there. So I painted the tiny tad with Odor X powder and threw it back on the scanner table. And this time sign, every, all the signs pointed that this was gonna be a much better result. Bruh. It literally gave me just the bill plate. That's actually the exact opposite of what I wanted. The software is supposed to take the model being scanned and the build plate, then remove the build plate and just give you the model. And I got, I got the build plate for whatever reason. So I thought like maybe that was like a weird glitch. So you, for like the scan, for this scanner, you can use it either with the rotary table where it spins and scans it stationary, or you can use it by hand and just go around the model. So that's what I decided to do. I was like, maybe that's a weird glitch. Let's do it by hand. So I started doing that. It looked like it was good. I rendered it out to an STL model and Bruh. I mean, how, how is this even possible? I can see, I can see you looking at it, robot. You know it's there. Why do you hate me? At this point, my annoyance level was like through the roof with the scan zero one. Maybe I messed something up in the settings or something, but at this point I was looking for a new solution. I was done with this reality thing. And what I found was a mesh room. And it's, it's, it's screw, the, screw the scanner. This mesh room stuff is outstanding. I think the things that we can do with it are limitless. If you have any ideas of things you want me to like take pictures of and mod or print, let me know in the comments down below because this is, I think we can have some fun with this, this software. Now the software is not new, but if you live underneath a rock like myself, Today's your lucky day. Meshroom is a free software that you can use to take multiple photos of different objects and then it just meshes them together to create a 3D model. Also, did I mention that Meshroom is free? The CR Scan 01, 
not free. It's $759.99, and all it's done so far is pissed me off. So what do I got to lose or try and measure them? So I took our bait here. I set it up on the scan plate along with some other stationary items to kind of give the software some anchor points to help mesh it together. And the first pass looked promising. I tried to make sure that I took pictures of all the sides of the bait, but the resulting resolution still left a little bit to be desired. So I did what anybody would do. I took a shit ton more photos. Also to aid the software even more, I rubbed off some of that matte finish to kind of give the model some texture. And that way, when it was meshed together, there would be, it would just help it understand which side was which. I then took 101 photos, hit rendered, and waited, and waited. Now my PC has a 2080 Ti, a 3950X, which is 16 core, and it still took quite a long time for it to chew through all that data, but when it was done, it spit out this. And deep within the noise is what we're looking for. The tiny tad. But now the problem was, how are we gonna get it out? The answer is Mesh Mixer. I pulled this model into Mesh Mixer and I started using the plane cut to remove anything that wasn't the tiny tad. In addition, after I got all the noise out, I had to go into the edit tool, make the model a solid and reduce the mesh density down to something I basically reduced it as much as I could and still maintained all of the features of the model. The reason I did this is that I noticed that when I exported the, the model out with a really high mesh density, SOLIDWORKS had a hard time kind of turning that STL model into a solid model, and I needed it to be a solid model in SOLIDWORKS so I could edit it. Also, it's a good idea if you're gonna do this to use the Mesh Mixer Sculpt tool to kind of smooth out and correct any anomalies you have in your model before you export it. But after all the prep work was done, I was left with an STL model that I could convert into a SOLIDWORKS model and hopefully make a tiny tad. The next thing I need to figure out though is how was I going to anchor the hooks and the line to the bait? I couldn't just like put holes in the model and then tie the line to it because if I ever did catch a fish with it, it would just break and I would lose it. So I needed something better than that. What I decided to do was cut the bait in half and give it like a stainless steel backbone connecting the eye at the front where the line connects to the two hooks. That way if I did catch something, even if the bait broke, I would still catch the fish. What I used was 20 gauge 304 stainless steel wire. I figured that was gonna be strong enough as long as I wasn't fishing for like blue whales and being stainless steel, it wasn't gonna corrode in like 15 minutes. Another concern I had while trying to create this bait was keeping the weight roughly the same as the original. If I wanted to perform like the original, it needs to it needs to weigh the, like the original, also it needs to float. The original came in around 3.8 grams and after a little bit of messing around with slicer settings, the one that I printed along with the steel backbone came in around 3.5 grams. And I figured I needed to stay three, under 3.8 so after I ended up painting it and everything, it wouldn't end up being too heavy. How I printed the two halves were, I, I basically did a 0% infill and then I messed around with the wall thickness until I got basically a weight that I was happy with. And then remember, this thing needs to float, so being hollow with 0% infill was actually a bonus. Next up was the assembly. I took the two halves and I put the steel backbone in between them in the channel that I created, and I basically glued them together. Now I do wanna say something here. I used PLA, which let's just say, isn't known for its best outdoor performance, but I had a bunch of it on hand and I figured that this is the first time I'm giving this a try, it probably should work. And I was hoping that the paint would kind of help protect it. But moving forward, if you're gonna like make a bunch of these to actually use a lot, PETG would probably, have better, probably be a better material, I think. And the glue that I used for the PLA model was, um, I essentially just used my go-to, Weld On 4. Now Weld On 4 is made for acrylic, but for whatever reason, it works amazing at gluing together PLA. After it's set, I needed to try to seal the bait. Like I said earlier, the bait needs to float. And although it's hollow, FDM, printing isn't really known for being watertight. So I painted the shit out of it. I used some matte white paint that's made for plastics and I just went ham. I put on like a thousand coats and I almost, when it was all said and done, the bait's weight had like doubled at the end of this. Now the idea here was to use the paint to kind of seal up all the gaps. And then I planned at the end to use a Dremel and some sandpaper to kind of sculpt the bait to the original like the best I could. And it actually worked out pretty, pretty good. Now the last thing I needed to do was give it like a final finish that would again help seal it from water ingress and be something that like a fish would eat. So I asked my dad what color he would he wanted this bait. He said black. So I looked around to see what I had and all I had at the time to paint this thing was fingernail polish. Now I'm not sure again how this will work long term, but it's got glitter in it. So 
fish like shiny shit? Let's do it. And then this is where I think I made a mistake. I'll, let me know if you agree. I had planned to use my airbrush to paint the bait, but, but since the nail polish had glitter in it, and I've had issues in the past with glitter clogging my airbrush, I decided I was gonna brush it on, which worked, but it didn't give me that nice smooth finish that I wanted. In the end, it's not bad. It's like a derpy version of the original, <laughs> thanks to my painting skills. But the, the shape, it seems correct. And the weight is pretty good. It's right in there. It's at 3.9 grams, which is 0.1 grams over the original. I mean, it looks like a tiny tad. Maybe, maybe it's just like a derpy tad. We'll call it a, the derpy tad. Now my question to you before we get any farther in the video, just looking at it in its current state, do you think it will work like the original? When it comes to diving, when it comes to the action, can't really test it for fishing, but do you think it'll work? And if you're looking to use, like if you're looking for a good resource on how to use Meshroom, I'll leave a link in the description below to the video I watched. It's one put out by Prusa a few years back, but it helped me get the gist of how the software works and it'll, I think, help you out too if you want to try it out. And like I said, sadly, we can't take these things out and see if it works. Reason being, it's January and I live in Michigan, so it's cold, it's really cold. But I do plan on using this in, you know, when, when it turns warm in the summer. And if it's something you want to see, let me know. Like I said, I'm going to use it regardless, but if you want me to film the experience and see if we catch anything, uh, just, let, just let me know in the description below. Maybe we'll make that video. Now, I can't just end the video here where I'm like, hey, look, it looks like it, doesn't it? It's a derpy version. We got to test it somehow. And since we can't go out and fish, we can do, we can do another thing. Because if it doesn't act like the original Tiny Tad, this is essentially just a derpy bobber. And because it's too cold to go out, what we're going to do instead is use my fish tank to see how it swims. The first thing I set out to do was just to see if it floated. The original one floats, this one needs a float. Also, I took the hooks off so I didn't snag any of my fishy buddies. But in the float test, checked out. It seems to be slightly higher or sits slightly higher in the water than the original. But regardless, the derpy tad is floating. The next thing I wanted to check was the action. I wanted to see if it dove down like the original. I wanted to see if it moved like the original. And this is where I, this is where I feared it would struggle the most, but things actually turned out to be pretty darn good. In the end, the derpy tad is actually pretty good, it seems, at least in functionality to the original. I don't know how it's gonna do actually out in the world fishing. I don't know how the finish is gonna hold up. The PLA is a question mark. But these all, these all can be changed down the, down the line. If it catches fish, that's all we really need to do. And like I said, I do plan on trying it out this summer. If it's something you want to see, let me know in the description below. Also, if you have any ideas for what we should do with this new software I discovered that's been around forever, also let me, down, let me know in the description below. It doesn't need to be tech related. It can be anything. I'm game for trying pretty much anything. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this video. I hope you find something interesting in all this. Hope you subscribe and I'll see you next time.